Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode with Sharp Education. Today, we're working with better information than we usually do. Usually, we're working with Yahoo Finance data. And Yahoo Finance is a great source of free financial information. You can get tick data from any ticker you can think of, exchange rates, options, contracts, you name it. Limited for free, but really good, considering, again, that it is free. But... I, as you know, have a qualm with purely financial information, and that is you can only generate purely technical derivatives from it. Technical information doesn't provide a lot of information or any about what will happen to that asset going forward. And if it does, there are a lot of rigorous tests that we know how to conduct now to assure that that is the case. Regardless, what I think is more useful is economic data. And a really good provider of economic data is the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve has a website called the Federal Reserve Economic Database, or FRED. It looks like this. So in the Federal Reserve Economic Database, they provide you with a free API key. If you go to API keys and request an API key, then you'll just put in a request and request it and they'll give it to you. It doesn't matter what the request says. Here is my API key down here. I'm going to blur this out in the video and I will be importing it from a file so it's kept secret. It's not a high security thing, but I shouldn't be showing you guys. So this is my API key here and I have that imported into a Python file in my VS Code interface. So let's go back. Okay, so now we're back and we have my API key pasted into this file up here in the corner. So let's bring that into our Jupyter Notebook. So Fred, API import Fred. And if you don't have the Fred API installed, which I imagine you don't, you have to go pip pip install Fred API. I already have it installed, so it'll look like this, requirement already satisfied. Yours will look a little bit different with some colors. Now, once we have Fred installed, we need our API imported as well. So from Fred API key, import API key, which is what I have it defined as. Perfect. So Fred is going to equal um, Fred, again, which is with a capital F, and the API key is going to be what we have defined it as, or what I have defined it as, as my key. And you can just type in the literal key that they gave you from the website. The reason I'm doing this is just so I don't show you guys the API key that I that is mine. So keeps it secret. It's a little bit complex. If you don't know what I'm doing, don't worry about it. Importing a module isn't necessary for what we're doing today. So once we have Fred installed, we can use it to take pretty much any sort of data we want. We're used to bringing in S&P 500 data from Yahoo Finance, yf.download, and we can do the same thing here with the Federal Reserve Economic Databases API. So fred.getseries. And what we want is the name of the series for the S&P 500. If we go back to the Federal Reserve Economic Database and we search for the S&P 500, click on it, you'll see that we have a little series code here, SP500. So we copy this, control C, and we paste this into a string in our get series. But that's not the only thing we can use the, the Federal Reserve Economic Database to get. The Federal Reserve Economic Database is robust. It has a ton of different information that we can get. So what if we're interested in the volatility index or the federal was the federal funds rate you can get all of that so federal funds rate federal funds effective rate they just dropped it for the first time despite inflation still being high very interesting subject that i i like to talk about but we're not doing today we're just going to call in the federal funds rate the name of the series is fed funds and we do the same thing so fred dot get series String, Fed funds. Great. So FFR is going to equal this, append as data frame of it, PD. Great. And now we have all of the information since the 1950s completely for free, except 
you'll notice that this is changing on a monthly basis because they don't change the federal funds rate very often. So that's really interesting. You can get the federal funds rate on a monthly basis completely for free, and you can merge it with this other column, with this other data frame. But for now, I'm going to be looking for more daily information. And I search for volatility index. Volatility index. No. VIX CLS is the name of the code. So let's go back to Python and paste this in here and call that the name of our data frame and take a look at VIX. So this is the volatility index since 1990. That's 35 years of information for free. And it's useful because you can merge this with the S&P 500 because it is daily information. Let me show you how to do that and we can get rid of the federal funds rate. Um, let's go pandas.concat and we want to concatenate our two data frames, SPY and VIX. And we want to concatenate that along axis equals one because we're doing it along this index, the long index. And, and we want to set join to be inner. This should make it so our final data frame has the S&P 500 and the percent change and the volatility index aligned along the date. So now we have volatility index and the S&P 500 together. Let's make a plot of that. So let's go import matplotlib as no dot pi plot as plt. And let's just plt dot plot. And I want to do so data frame is going to be this. So I'm going to make the subset just be data frame, and then we're going to do the last 500 days. And then we're going to plot the last, because the chart is a lot of noise here. So we'll do subset percent change and subset volatility index. Great. And now you can see how the S&P 500 interacts with the volatility index. Um, this orange, we'll do plt.legend. Okay, and that's how you can use the Federal Reserve Economic Database to pull in economic data. Now, we looked at the federal funds rate and the volatility index and the S&P 500 data, but this is a really, really, really robust data provider. Federal Reserve Economic Database has a lot of information to work with. And I think the patterns that you can encounter between economic data and stock price movements are way stronger than anything you're going to find from retrospective price movements because nobody is factoring in what the previous value of a share price was when they're valuing a share price. The only thing that matters is forward-looking information, and that has a lot to do with the picture painted by the economy and therefore represented by economic data. So if you have an econ background and you know what a lot of this information I'm talking about is like the inversion between the two year and 10 year treasury rate, the drop in the federal funds rate despite inflation being high, what inflation is, how it's measured, CPI versus PCE. If you know what all of that is that I just said, that gives you an advantage in the stock market. And knowing how to work with the Federal Reserve Economic Database is of paramount importance, in my opinion, if you're going to be making an effective trading strategy. I say a lot of what does not work. What does work, I think, is much more likely to come from Fred than Yahoo Finance. But the integration or knowing how to work with both of them together can can put you ahead of a lot of people. So congratulations on making your first plot using information from the Federal Reserve Economic Database. And I look forward to building more strategies with this API. It's a bit trickier to use. It's a little bit less intuitive, but it is much more powerful. So. Thanks for sticking around, and until next time, stay sharp.